फिफ्टीन बायोडाइवर्सिटी एंड कंजर्वेशन इफ एन एलियन फ्रॉम अ डिस्टेंट गैलेक्सी व टू विजिट अवर प्लैनेट अर्थ द फर्स्ट थिंग दैट वुड अमेज एंड बैफिल हिम वुड मोस्ट प्रोबेबली बी द एनॉर्मस डाइवर्सिटी ऑफ लाइफ दैट ही वुड एनकाउंटर Even for humans the rich variety of living organisms with which they share this planet never ceases to astonish and fascinate us the common man would find it hard to believe that there are more than 20000 species of ants 3 lakh species of beetles 28000 species of fishes and nearly 20000 species of orchids ecologist and evolutionary biologist have been trying to understand the significance of such diversity by asking important questions why are there so many species did such great diversity exist throughout earth's history how did this diversification come about how and why is the diversity important to the biosphere would it function any differently if the diversity was much less how do humans benefit from the diversity of life bio diversity in a biosphere immense diversity or heterogeneity exist not only at the species level but at all levels of biological organization ranging from macromolecules within cells to biomes Biodiversity is the term popularized by the sociobiologist Edward Wilson to describe combined diversity at all the levels of biological organization. The most important of them are one genetic diversity. A single species might show high diversity at the genetic level over its distributional range. the genetic variation shown by the medicinal plant rowolfia vomitoria growing in different himalayan ranges might be in terms of the potency and concentration of the active chemical reserpine that the plant produces india has more than 50000 genetically different strains of rice and 1000 varieties of mango second species diversity the diversity at the species level for example the western ghats have a greater amphibian species diversity than the eastern ghat third ecological diversity at the ecosystem level india for instance with its deserts rainforest mangroves coral reefs wetlands eustaries and alpine meadows has a greater ecosystem diversity than a scandinavian country like norway it has taken millions of years of evolution to accumulate this rich diversity in nature but we could lose all that wealth in less than 2 centuries if the present rates of species loses continue Biodiversity and its conservation are now vital environmental issues of international concern as more and more people around the world begin to realize the critical importance of biodiversity for our survival and well-being on this planet. How many species are there on the earth and how many in India? Since There are published records of all the species discovered and named. We know how many species in all have been recorded so far, but it is not easy to answer the question of how many species there are on the earth. According to International Union for Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources (IUCN) 2004, the total number of plant and animal species described so far is slightly more than 1.5 million. But we have no clear idea of how many species are yet to be discovered and described. estimates vary widely and many of them are only educated guesses for many taxonomic groups species inventories are more complete in temperate than in tropical countries 
considering that an overwhelmingly large proportion of the species waiting to be discovered are in the tropics biologists make a statistical comparison of the temperate tropical species richness of an exhaustive exhaustive exhaustively studied group of insects and extrapolate this ratio to other groups of animals and plants to come up with a gross estimate of the total number of the species on earth some extreme estimates range from 20 to 50 million but a more conservative and a scientifically sound estimate made by robert may places the global species diversity at about 7 million let us look at some interesting aspects about earth's biodiversity based on the currently available species inventories more than 50% of all the species recorded are animals while plants including algae fungi Bryophytes, gymnosperms, and angiosperms comprise no more than twenty-two percent of the total. Among animals, insects are the most species-rich taxonomic group, making up more than seventy percent of the total. That means, out of every ten animals on this planet, seven are insects. Again, how do we explain this enormous diversification of insects? the number of fungi species in the world is more than the combined total of the species of fishes amphibians reptiles and mammals in figure 15.1 biodiversity is depicted showing species number of major taxa so you can look at the figure closely where the pie chart shows about invertebrates vertebrates and plants It should be noted that these estimates do not give give any figures for prokaryotes. Biologists are not sure about how many prokaryotic species there might be. The problem is that conventional taxonomic methods are not suitable for identifying microbial species, and many species are simply non-culturable under laboratory conditions. if we accept biochemical or molecular criteria for delineating delineating species for this group then their diversity alone might run into millions although india has only 2.4% of the world's land area it shares it sh- its share of the global species diversity is an impressive 8.1 percent that is what makes our country one of the 12 mega diversity countries of the world nearly 45000 species of plants and twice as many of animals have been recorded from india how many living species are actually there waiting to be discovered and named if we accept may's global estimates only 22% of the total species have been recorded so far applying this proportion to india's diversity figures we estimate that there are probably more than 1 lakh plant species and more than 3 lakh animal species yet to be discovered and described would we ever be able to complete the inventory of the biological wealth of our country consider the immense trained manpower taxonomist and the time required to complete the job the situation appears more hopeless when we realize that a large fraction of these species faces the threat of becoming extinct even before we discover them Nature's biological library is burning even before we catalog the titles of all the books stocked here. Patterns of biodiversity. First, latitudinal gradients. The diversity of plants and animals is not uniform throughout the world but shows a rather uneven distribution. For many group of animals or plants there are interesting patterns and diversity the most well known being the latitudinal gradient in diversity 
in general species diversity decreases as we move away from the equator towards the poles with very few exceptions tropics latitudinal range of 23.5 degree north to 23.5 degree south harbor more species than temperate or polar areas colombia located near the equator has nearly 1400 species of bird while new york at 41 degree north has 105 species and greenland at 71 degree north only 56 species india with much of its land area in the tropical latitudes has more than 1200 species of birds a forest in a tropical region like equator has up to 10 times as many species of vascular plants as a forest of equal area in temperate region like the midwest of the usa the largely tropical amazonian rainforest in south america has the greatest biodiversity on the earth it is home to more than 40000 species of the plants 3000 of fishes 1300 of birds 427 of mammals 427 of amphibians 378 of reptiles and of more than 125000 invertebrates scientists estimate that in these rainforests there might be at least 2 million insect species waiting to be discovered and named What is so special about tropics that might account for their greater biological diversity? Ecologists and evolutionary biologists have proposed various hypotheses. Some important ones are speci- speciation is generally a function of time. Unlike temperate regions subjected to frequent glaciations in the past, tropical latitudes have remained relatively undisturbed for millions of years and thus had a long evolutionary time for species diversification second tropical environments unlike temperate ones are less seasonal relatively more constant and predictable such constant environments promote niche specialization and lead to a greater species diversity and third there is more solar energy available in tropics which contribute to higher productivity this in turn might contribute indirectly to greater diversity second species area relationships during his high pine uh, during his pioneering and extensive exploration explorations in the wilderness of south american jungles the great german naturalist and geographer alexander von humboldt observed that within a region species richness increased with increasing explored area but only up to a limit in fact the relation uh, between species richness and area for a wide variety of taxa angiosperm plants birds bats freshwater fishes turns out to be a rectangular hyperbola as shown in figure 15.2 on a logarithmic scale the relationship is a straight line described by the equation log s is equal to log c plus z log a where s is equal to species richness a is equal to area z is equal to slope of line that is regression coefficient c is equal to y intercept ecologists have discovered that value of z lies in the range of 0.1 to 0.2 regardless of the taxonomic group or the region whether it is the plant in britain bird in california or mollusk in new york state the slopes of the regression lines are amazingly similar 
but if you analyze the species area relationship among very large areas like entire continents you will find that the slope of the line to be much steeper z values in the range of 0.6 to 1.2 for example for frugivorous fruit eating birds and mammals in the tropical forest of different continents the slope is found to be 1.15 what what do steeper slopes mean in this context the importance of species diversity to the ecosystem does the number of species in a community really matter to the functioning of the ecosystem this is the question for which ecologists have not been able to give a definite answer for many decades ecologists believe that communities with more species generally tend to be more stable than those with less species what exactly is stability for a biological community a stable community should not show too much variation in productivity from year to year it must be either resistant or resilient to occasional disturbances natural or man made and it must also be resistant to invasions by alien species we don't know how these attributes are linked to species richness in a community but david tillman's long term ecosystem experiment using outdoor plots provide some tentative answers tillman found that plots with more species showed less year to year variation in total biomass he also showed that in his experiments increased diversity contributed to higher productivity although we may not understand completely how species richness contribute to the well-being of an ecosystem we know enough to realize that rich biodiversity is not only essential for ecosystem health but imperative for the very survival of the human race on this planet at a time when we are losing species at an alarming pace one might ask does it really matter to us if a few species become extinct would western ghats ecosystems be less functional if one of its tree frog species is lost forever how is our quality of life affected if say instead of 20000 we have only 15000 species of ants on the earth there are no direct answer to such native questions sorry there are no uh, there are no direct answers to such naive questions but we can develop a proper perspective through an analogy the river popper hypothesis used by stanford ecologist paul elrich in an airplane ecosystem all parts are joined together using thousands of rivets species if every passenger traveling in it starts popping a rivet to take home causing a species to become extinct it may not affect flight safety proper functioning of the ecosystem initially but as more and more rivets are removed the plane becomes dangerously weak over a period of time furthermore which rivet is removed may also be critical loss of rivets on the wings key species that drive major ecosystem functions is obviously a more serious threat to flight safety than loss of few rivets on the seats or window inside the plane loss of biodiversity while it is doubtful if any new species are being added through speciation into the earth's treasury of species there is no doubt about their continuing losses the biological wealth of our planet has been declining rapidly and the accusing finger is clearly pointing to human activities the colonization of tropical pacific islands by human 
is said to have led to the extinction of more than 2000 species of native birds the iucn red list 2004 documents the extinction of 784 species including 338 vertebrates 359 invertebrates and 87 plants in the last 500 years some example of recent extinctions include the dodo mauritius quagga africa thylacine australia stellas sea cow russia and three subspecies bali javan caspian of tiger the last 20 years alone have witnessed the disappearance of 27 species careful analysis of records shows that extinctions across taxa are not random some groups like amphibians appear to be more vul- vulnerable to extinction adding to the grim scenario of extinction is the fact that more than 15500 species worldwide are facing the threat of extinction presently 12% of all bird species 23% of all mammal species 32% of all amphibian species and 31% of all gymnosperm species in the world face the threat of threat of extinction from a study of the history of life on the earth through fossil records we learn that large scale loss of species like the one we are currently witnessing have also happened earlier even before humans appeared on the scene during the long period that is more than 3 billion years since the origin and diversification of life on earth there were five episode of mass mass extinction of species how is the sixth extinction presently in progress different from the previous episodes the difference is in the rates the current species extinction rates are to be esti- are estimated to be 100 to 1000 times faster than in the pre human times and our activities are responsible for faster rates ecologist warn that if present trend continue nearly half of all the species on the earth might be wiped out within the next 100 years in general loss of biodiversity in a region may lead to decline in plant production lowered resistance to environmental pertub- perturbations such as drought and increased variability in certain ecosystem processes such as plant productivity water use and pest and disease cycle causes of biodiversity losses the accelerated rates of species extinction that the world is facing now are largely due to human activities there are four major causes the evil quotient is the sorbiquet used to describe them first habitat loss and fragmentation this is the most important cause driving animals and plants to extinction the most dramatic example of habitat loss come from tropical rainforest once covering more than 40% of the earth's land surface these rainforests now cover no more than 6% they are being destroyed fast by the time you finish reading this chapter 1000 more hectares of rainforest would have been lost the amazon rainforest it is so huge that is called the lungs of the planet harboring probably million of species is being cut and cleared for cultivating soya beans or for conservation or or for conversion to grasslands for raising beef cattle besides total loss the degradation of many habitats by pollution also threatens the survival of many species when large habitats are broken up into small fragments due to various human activities 
mammals and birds requiring large territories and certain animals with migratory habits are badly affected leading to a population declines second over exploitation humans have always depended on nature for food and shelter but when need turns to greed it leads to over exploitation of natural resources many species extinction in the last 500 years stellar sea cow passenger pigeon were due to over exploitation by humans presently many marine fish population around the world are over harvested endangering the continued existence of some commercially important species third alien species invasions when alien species are introduced unintentionally or deliber- deliberately for whatever purpose some of them turn invasive and cause decline or extinction of indigenous species the nile perch introduced into lake victoria in east africa led eventually to the extinction of an ecologically unique assemblage of more than 200 species of killed fish in the lake you must be familiar with the environmental damage caused and threat posed to our native species by invasive weed invasive weed species like carrot grass parthenium lantana and water hyacinth ecordia the recent illegal introduction of the african catfish clarius garipinus for aquaculture purposes is posing a threat to the indigenous catfishes in our rivers fourth coextinctions when a species become extinct the plant and animal species associated with it in an obligatory way also become extinct when a host fish species become extinct its unique assemblage of parasites also meets the same fate another example in case of a, a coevolved plant pollinator mutualism where extinction of one invariably leads to the extinction of the other biodiversity conservation why should we conserve biodiversity there are many reasons some obvious and others not so obvious but all equally important they can be grouped into three categories narrowly utilitarian broadly utilitarian and ethical the narrowly utilitarian arguments for conserving biodiversity are obvious humans derive countless direct economic benefits from nature food cereal pulses fruits firewood fiber construction mat- construction material industrial products like tannins lubricants dyes resin perfumes and products of medical importance more than 25% of the drugs currently sold in the market worldwide are derived from plants and 20 25000 species of plants contribute to the traditional medicines used by native peoples around the world nobody knows how many more medicinally useful plants there are in tropical rainforest waiting to be explored with increasing resources put into bioprospecting exploring molecular genetic and species level diversity for products of economic importance nations endowed with rich biodiversity can expect to reap enormous benefits the broadly utilitarian arguments says that Biodiversity plays a major role in many ecosystem services that nature provides. The fast dwindling Amazon forest is estimated to produce through photosynthesis 20% of the total oxygen in the earth's atmosphere. Can we put an economic value on this service by nature? 
you can get some idea by finding out how much your neighborhood hospital spends on a cylinder of oxygen. Pollination without which plant cannot give us fruits or seed is another service. Ecosystem provide uh, through ecosystems provide through pollinate pollinators layer bees uh, bumblebees birds and bats. What will be the cost of accomplishing pollination without help from natural pollinators? There are other intangi intangible benefits that we derive from the nature. The aesthetic pleasures of walking through thick woods, watching spring flowers in a full boom or waking up to a bulbul song in the morning. Can we put a price tag on such things? Mm. The ethical argument for conserving biodiversity relates to what we owe to millions of plants, animals, and microbe species with whom we share this planet. Philosophically or spiritually, we need to realize that every species has an intrinsic value. Even if it may not be of current or economic value to us, we have a moral duty to care for their well-being and pass on our biological legacy in good order to future generation. How do we conserve biodiversity? When we conserve and protect the whole ecosystem, its biodiversity at all levels is protected. We save the entire forest to save the tiger. This approach is called in situ, that is on-site conservation. However, when there are situations where an animal or plant is endangered or threatened, organism facing a very high risk of extinction in the wild in the near future, and needs urgent measures to save it from extinction, ex situ, that is off-site conservation, is the desirable approach. In situ conservation Faced with the conflict between development and conservation, many nations find it unrealistic and economically not feasible to conserve all their biological wealth. Invariably, the number of species waiting to be saved from extinction far exceeds the conservation resources available. On a global basis, this problem has been addressed by eminent conservationists. They identified for maximum protection certain biodiversity hotspot regions with very high levels of species richness and high degree of endemism that is, species confined to that region and not found anywhere else, initially 25 biodiversity hotspots were identified, but subsequently 9 more have been added to the list, bringing the total number of biodiversity hotspots in the world to 34. These hotspots are also regions of accelerated habitat loss. Three of these hotspots Western Ghats and Sri Lanka, Indo-Burma and Himalaya cover our country's exceptionally high biodiversity regions. Although all the biodiversity hotspots put together cover less than 2% of the Earth's land area, the number of species they collectively harbor is extremely high and strict protection of these hotspots could reduce the ongoing mass extinction by almost 30%. In India, ecologically unique and biodiversity rich regions are legally protected as biosphere reserves, national park and sanctuaries. India now has 14 biosphere reserves, 90 national parks and 448 wildlife sanctuaries. India has also a history of religious and cultural tradition that emphasized protection of nature. In many cultures, tracts of forest were set aside and all the trees and wildlife within were venerated and given total protection. Such sacred groves are found in Khasi and Jaintia hills in Meghalaya, Aravali hills of Rajasthan, Western Ghat regions of Karnataka and Maharashtra and the Sarguja, Canada, sorry, Chanda and Bastar areas of Madhya Pradesh. In Meghalaya, the sacred grooves are the last 
refugees for a large number of rare and threatened planets and threatened plants ex situ conservation in this approach threatened animals and plants are taken out from their natural habitat and placed in special setting where they can be protected and given special care zoological parks botanical gardens and wildlife safari parks serve this purpose there are many animals that have become extinct in the wild but continued to be safe maintained in zoological parks in recent years ex situ conservation has advanced beyond keeping threatened species in enclosures now gametes of threatened species can be preserved in viable and fertile condition for long periods using cryo preservation techniques eggs can be fertilized in vitro and plants can be propagated using tissue culture methods seeds of different genetic strains of commercially important plants can be kept for a long periods in seed banks Biodiversity knows no political boundaries and its conservation is therefore a collective responsibility of all nations. The Historic Convention on Biological Diversity, the Earth Summit held in Rio de Janeiro in 1992 called upon all nations to take appropriate measures for conservation of biodiversity and sustainable utilization of its benefits. In a follow-up, the World Summit on Sustainable Development held in 2002 in Johannesburg, South Africa, 190 countries pledged their commitment to achieve by 2010 a significant reduction in the current rate of biodiversity loss at global, regional and local levels. Summary Since life originated on Earth, Nearly 3.8 billion years ago there had been enormous diversification of life forms on the earth biodiversity refers to the sum total of biodiversity that exists at all levels of biological organization of particular importance is the diversity at genetic species and ecosystem levels and conservation efforts are aimed at protecting diversity at all these levels more than 1.5 million species have been recorded in the world but there might still be nearly 6 million species on the world earth waiting to be discovered and named of the named species greater than 70% are animals of which 70% are insects the group fungi has more species than all the vertebrate species combined india with about 45000 species of plants and twice as many species of animals is one of the 12 mega diversity countries of the world species diversity on the earth is not uniformly distributed but shows interesting patterns it is generally highest in the tropics and decreases towards the pole important explanation for the species richness of the tropics are tropics had more evolutionary time they provide a relatively constant environment and they receive more solar energy which contributes to greater productivity species richness is also function of the area of a region the species area relationship is generally a rectangular hyperbolic function it is believed that communities with high diversity tend to be less variable more productive and more resistant to biological invasions earth fossil history reveals incidence of mass extinctions in the past but the present rates of extinction largely attributed to human activities are 100 to 1000 times higher nearly 700 species have become extinct in recent times and more than 15500 species of which greater than 650 are from india currently face the threat of extinction the cause of high extinction rate at present include habitat particularly forest loss and fragmentation over exploitation biological invasions and co extinction 
Earth's rich biodiversity is vital for the very survival of mankind. The reason for conserving biodiversity are narrowly utilitarian, broadly utilitarian and ethical. Besides the direct benefits, food, fiber, firewood, pharmaceuticals, etc., there are many indirect benefits we receive through ecosystem services such as pollination, pest control, climate moderation and flood control. We also have a moral responsibility to take good care of Earth's biodiversity and pass it on in good order to our next generation. Biodiversity conservation may be in situ as well as ex situ. In in situ conservation, the endangered species are protected in their natural habitat so that the entire ecosystem is protected. Recently, 34 biodiversity hotspots in the world have been proposed for intensive conservation efforts. Of these, three Western Ghats, Sri Lanka, Himalaya and Indo-Burma cover India's rich biodiversity regions. Our country's in-situ conservation efforts are reflected in its 14 biosphere reserves, 90 national parks, more than 450 wildlife sanctuaries and many sacred grooves. Ex situ conservation methods include protective maintenance of threatened species in zoological parks and botanical gardens, in vitro fertilization, tissue culture propagation and cryopreservation of gametes. So here we complete the chapter biodiversity and conservation. If you like the audio, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and thank you so much for watching. Keep studying. Bye-bye.